Tissue culture media is a nutrient-rich sterile gel that gives plants everything they need to grow and to multiply. Today I'm going to show you two methods for making tissue culture media because why would you let your plants do all of the work when you can instead micromanage their entire existence? In part one of this video, I'll show you an easy and a fast method for making media at home. And in part two, I'm going to show you how I make larger quantities of media more efficiently in the laboratory. Everything that I use for this tutorial will be linked below, and I think we're ready to get started. The first method, which I'm going to call the no pour method, is ideal if you don't have a laminar flow hood because you don't need one. This is the method that I most often show in my videos, so if you have already seen it and mastered it, then skip to this timestamp and you will see a new method that I've never shown before. For the no pour method, we are going to need a large pressure cooker, or an Instapot works too, a cheap magnetic stirrer, some autoclavable polypropylene containers, the ingredients to make the media, which I'll talk about momentarily, a pH probe and hydroponic up or sodium hydroxide, a micro pipette for dispensing liquids, and lastly a scale. I'm pretty sure this scale is designed for drug dealers. If you've ever been to prison, comment below. Different plants require different media formulations, a media formulation is part of a protocol, which is a set of instructions for tissue culturing a certain type of plant. Today I'm going to be following a protocol that I completely made up. It's just pulled out of my butt. I'll talk about it a little bit more in a minute. But I typically find protocols on ResearchGate by searching the Latin name of the plant in addition to the keyword tissue culture or micropropagation. Today I'm going to be making one liter of tissue culture media. I start by adding 800 milliliters of distilled water to my container and then I turn on that magnetic stirrer. The first thing I'm going to add is 4.54 grams of MS. MS is a mix of major and minor salts. It contains nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, which might all sound familiar because they're also in fertilizer. You could theoretically make MS yourself by mixing together all of these different chemicals in the correct ratio, but why would we? Because Plant Cell Technology, today's sponsor, has already done it for us. Then I'm going to add 30 grams of sugar. It's pretty standard to add between 25 to 30 grams of sugar per liter of media. That's pretty much consistent throughout every single protocol. This will be the carbon source for our plants. In case you're curious, this media is going to be for my anthuriums and my corpse flowers. I want this media to promote callus formation, so today I'm going to use one milligram per liter of TDZ and one milligram per liter of NAA. Both of those are plant growth regulators. TDZ is a cytokinin. Cytokinin. Oh my god. Basically what you need to know about plant growth regulators is that cytokinins promote shoot formation and auxins promote root formation. So when you use a high cytokinin to auxin ratio, you'll get shoots. If you use more auxins than cytokinins, you'll get roots. But something magical happens when you use them in an equal ratio, and that is we get callus formation. Callus is a mass of undifferentiated cells. For most of the plants I work with, I do shoot culture. For example, philodendrons and monsteras are typically grown this way. I'll show an example of some philodendrons that I currently have in temporary immersion so that you can see. That media contains two milligrams per liter of BAP, a cytokinin, and 0.5 milligrams per liter of IBA and auxin. The last thing we need to add is a gelling agent this will take the liquid and turn it into a semi-solid. So I'm going to add seven grams of agar. I forgot to mention this earlier, but after adding the agar, make sure to fill the water up to the one liter mark. We don't start with one liter of water initially because adding the ingredients would cause the water level to rise and exceed one liter. And the final step before we cook the media is to adjust the pH to somewhere between 5.6 to 5.8. That is the range you will see for most plants. There are some outliers and freaks of nature who like different pHs, and this will be specified in the protocol. Now we're ready to pour the media into the individual containers. As I mentioned, these containers need to be made of polypropylene or PP, 
to be able to withstand the pressure cooker, which is going to max out around 121 degrees Celsius. The purpose of autoclaving is to kill any bacteria that could be in the media. We need it to be very, very clean. I start the sterilization process by adding 12 cups of water to my pressure cooker. If you remember anything from this video, always add water to the pressure cooker, lest you face the consequences. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. Do not fear the pressure cooker. Next, I'm going to crumple up some aluminum foil and throw it in. Good soup. This foil is going to support the first pressure cooker rack, and all together we're going to build three levels in here. Remember not to snap the lids onto the containers, just leave them lightly resting on top. After it's loaded, I'm going to secure the lid and I turn the burner up to high. Once steam starts coming out of this hole, turn on a timer for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, put the rocker on the pressure cooker to start building up that pressure. Our goal is to get the pressure up to 15 PSI, and then we wanna keep it at 15 PSI for 15 minutes. Once it's at 15 PSI, the rocker starts to do a little dance. It does this because it's excited about tissue culture. If the pressure is getting way higher than 15 PSI, just lower the heat of the burner and that will bring the pressure back down. After 15 minutes of 15 PSI, just turn the burner off and the pressure cooker will just slowly start to lose pressure. You don't want to remove the rocker, just leave everything as it is. And a few hours later, dinner is served. Bon appetit. I'm going to spray my hands with 70% isopropyl alcohol, and then I snap each of the lids onto its respective container. Try to be careful not to open the lids when you do this. We don't want your dirty house air getting in. <laughs> Sorry. We don't want these containers to become contaminated and there's bacteria in the air. Also, word of advice, don't use your pressure cooker to start slow cooking chili. I know we are currently in NFL season, but it's never a good practice to be mixing your kitchen things with your laboratory things. Keep all of this stuff separate as much as possible. That is it for the no pour method. That was the method I did for a very long time until I moved into this new laboratory space with access to a larger autoclave, which I will show you momentarily. The next method of sterilizing TC media that I'm going to show you is a lot more efficient if you're making large quantities. Think like three or four or five or 10 or 20 liters at once, but it does require you to have a liminar flow hood. In addition to the flow hood, you also need a media bottle or a few, depending on how much media you're making, slow cooker bags, PP containers, autoclave tape, and either a large pressure cooker or an actual autoclave, which is what I will be using today. The process of making the media looks exactly the same. However, instead of pouring the media into individual containers to sterilize it, I pour all of it into a glass media bottle. In this particular example, I'm making three liters of media on the hot plate, and I am dispersing that three liters between two separate two liter media bottles. If you fill up the media bottles all the way to the top, it will boil over while it's in the pressure cooker or the autoclave, so you really don't want to fill them up past three quarters way full. The magnetic stir bar is going to get dumped into the media bottle as well. For the second media bottle, I just have an extra magnetic stirrer that I put into it. We want these in there for later. I will show you why momentarily. The containers, like last time, are going to need to be sterilized as well, so I stack them like this, and then I place them into a slow cooker bag, which I then roll up and secure with autoclave tape. Um, autoclave tape is pretty cool. It changes color or it gets lines on it once it's been autoclaved. <laughs> I guess maybe it's not that cool. For the lids of the containers, I do the exact same thing in a separate slow cooker bag. I also autoclaved a couple of smaller containers that I'm planning to use to plate some blue oil fern spores pretty soon. I got that particular recommendation from a Twitter account called A Tiny Green Cell. 
Um, Sebastian does genetic modification work at home on his plants. It's so dope. I'm hopefully going to be interviewing him soon for the channel, so stay tuned. Oh, remember to subscribe if you haven't. Sorry, this isn't the time for that. You want to leave the lid of the media bottles a little bit loose so that they aren't going to explode under pressure. And in case it does explode or boil over, which it won't, I put the media bottles in a secondary containment tray. I like to run them on the shortest cycle, which is going to be liquid 30. Autoclaves like this have multiple types of cycles. They have gravity, which is more for like tools and stuff like that. And then they also have liquid cycles. Um, so that's what I'm using today since we're autoclaving liquid. Although it's called liquid 30, the cycle actually takes pretty much a whole hour. So after it's done, I remove the media and the containers from the autoclave, and I wear special gauntlet gloves to do this since everything is really hot. You really can't feel anything through them at all. So once everything is done, I place the media bottles and the containers under the laminar flow hood. The media is really hot, obviously, so I wait for an hour or so probably even longer for it to cool down enough. The stir bar is useful because if the media starts to solidify before you've poured it, then you can place it on the magnetic stirrer and stir it up, start to agitate it and break it up a little bit. I open the slow cooker bag that contains the media containers and I lay them all out. If the media is still too hot to handle with your bare hands, then I do sometimes wear the autoclave gauntlet gloves while I pour the media. If it's cool enough, then I'll just use my hands or my hands with gloves. These particular snap lock containers are marked at the 100 milliliter mark line. So that's usually what I fill them to. Some people like to be more exact about the amount of media that gets dispensed into each container and make it really, really consistent. For me, I'm just doing these examples for YouTube so it doesn't matter as much. But if you do want it to be very exact, you can use a pipitor to distribute the media. After that, you can open the slow cooker bag that contains the lids, and obviously you just snap the lids onto the containers. There's not much to that. If you find yourself having problems with too much condensation inside the containers, my advice would be to wait longer to pour the media so that it's cooler when you pour it, or you can leave the media under the flow hood without lids on for like 10 minutes or so, so that that condensation has a chance to evaporate out of the containers. Too much condensation can cause issues for plants like hyperhidricity. Hyperhidricity occurs when plant tissue takes up too much water, which leads to this abnormal, translucent, almost glassy look to the plants, and the new growth will be very fragile which is obviously not good. That is how I pour the media. Before I go, a few housekeeping items. If you are interested in learning how to properly use an autoclave from someone smarter than I, I will link a video to the bumbling biologist below. She has a fantastic autoclave video and she goes further into information about autoclaves and you probably even wanna know, but it's a great video. Secondly, I have merch. I'm wearing it actually right now. This is the front of it. It has a jar that says plants and jars. The back has a really kind of freaky, scary skeleton, but he's doing tissue culture. Okay, that was awkward. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.